Uh, I'm Richard Jacobson, but you can call me Jake. Although I've been studying medical research papers for 16 years, I'm not a trained medical professional. I'm not here to give you medical advice. I'm here to report what I read. Although I advocate fasting, do not fast over 48 hours unless you've read up on the subject. I'm 73. I've been following a paleo low carb diet for eight years. Four years ago, I attended an AHS presentation by Thomas Seyfried called Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. He has written a book of the same title. He believes that cancer is caused by overnutrition, especially carbohydrates. The first thing I did was read his book. In the book, he said all doctors should read the classic prolonged fasting books written in the early 20th century. Here are the books I read. Prolonged fasting was common from 1900 to 1930. During that period, visits to medical doctors dropped by 50%. Most people fasted in their homes and were visited daily by fasting practitioners who specialize in conducting fasts. Fasting practitioners and clinics are active in Germany, Spain, and Eastern Europe today. Also, many universities conducted fasting studies. They determined that a healthy individual could water fast for 30 days without harm. These books are full of case histories of people who had seemingly incurable diseases who were fasted to health. <clears throat> I found one book where a doctor had kept statistics on 614 patients over a 10 year period who were fasted to effect a cure. Out of 614 patients, only 13% were not cured or improved. These are amazing statistics. These numbers are especially amazing as modern medicine cannot match these cure rates. My curiosity drove me to discover why these cures occurred. First start, part of my journey was exploration to examine what hunter-gatherer studies had to offer. Hunter-gatherer researchers found that isolated hunter-gatherers, without exception, rarely had diseases of aging. Studies on what they did not eat was the foundation of our paleo diet today. But these hunter-gatherers had another thing in common. Their male fr meal frequency was chaotic. Many times hunters would not Many times hunters would not be successful for three or four days. Elizabeth Thomas documents that they never ate during these hunts. as was too time consuming to hunt for food. Thus these hunters were on 72 to 120 hour fasts. A change of seasons or droughts would make the animals migrate. So the tribes would have to chase after them. That might mean a fast lasting a week or two. The seasonal fast was mimicked by fasting practitioner of the early 20th century. Because we inherit our genes from hunter-gatherers, some researchers say our bodies were never designed to eat three meals a day, seven days a week. Today, overnutrition is a major health problem for most of us. 
to determine what per repair processes are stimulated by fasting, I consulted books and studies done in the early 20th century, studies done in Japan during the 1990s, studies done in the 21st century, especially done by Mark Matson, Walter Longo, and Anne Maria Cuevo. And I did my own blood and strength tests. Why did we evolve so that the body repair processes is only stimulated by periods without food? Our strongest instinct is to survive. Success in hunting is vital to survival. Up to a point, the longer you fast, the sharper your mind becomes, your vision improves, your reaction times improve, your energy levels remain the same. You are not distracted by hunger. In effect, you become a better hunter so you can survive. It's my contention that these prolonged fasting repair processes were the reason these fasting practitioners had success in fasting their patients. I found that there were eight major repair processes that were supported by over 200 studies. Now we'll go over all these repair processes in detail. Damage within the cell to proteins, mitochondria, DNA, and other cell components account for many age-related diseases. Autophagy is an ancient cell repair process used by all living organisms to maintain health. Normally, cells do automatic autophagy during the night to clean up damaged cell components and keep cells functioning efficiently. Researchers found that as you age, autophagy declined. However, they also found that you can always force autophagy by fasting. Autophagy is a hot research area. Researchers are busy giving mice diseases by changing their genes and then fasting them to cure their disease through autophagy. Researchers have had good success in their experiments. Unfortunately, only autophagy in animals has been studied, so we don't know how long an older person like me has to fast to force autophagy. During my prolonged fast, I tried to determine when autophagy occurs during the fasting process. Based on improvements in my skin and strength, autophagy probably starts after four days of fasting. Proteins are essential for life even during fasting. Fasting induces protein scavenging to feed the body. Research has shown that the body is amazingly intelligent in searching out protein that is not needed. Examples of unnecessary proteins are skin blemishes, cysts, damaged muscle fibers, and tumors. All of these protein scavenge are sent to the digest digestive system to be reused. Fasting animal studies have shown that muscle fiber count remains the same as long as you exercise. The muscle fiber is basically hollowed out for protein, but that's as done as a last resort. When you refeed, the muscle fiber is automatically filled in without exercise. Your muscles are restored to the state they were in before fasting, minus the damaged muscle fibers and cells. This makes evolutionary sense in a hunter 
who has gone a long period without food needs to recover fast. If a cell has a message to send, it uses a transmitter. If the cell has an action to perform, it uses a receptor. Hormones are the messenger. There are appetite-stimulating hormones, but they are not our problem. There are three appetite suppression hormones, insulin, leptin, and GLP-1. Your body can lose your sensitivity to these appetite suppressors if you overeat. That loss of sensitivity is called resistance and will cause you to overeat even more. The good news is, is the fast resents your sensitivity to these appetite suppressors. Your transmitters and receptors become highly sensitive. Cancer cells need lots of blood glucose to flourish. Based upon his treatment of brain cancer patients, Dr. Seyfried states that if you get your blood sugar below 70, the tumor will start to shrink. Free-floating cancer cells will die. Sandra's and my blood sugar fell from 90 to below 70, the fourth day of fasting, and remained so throughout the fast. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF, increases during fasting. BDNF is necessary for proper functioning of the brain, including building new memory synapses. I like this quote in the paper by Rothman. He states that fasting stimulates the production of BDNF for evolutionary reasons. His quote is, reflected on the given findings, mood enhancement during fasting may prom promote success in the fight for survival and search for food. Mood enhancement together with increased alertness and bolder activity probably reduces the de detrimental influences of psychological distress due to underfeeding. Sandra and I do a 48-hour fast once a month to enhance our thinking. I experience better memory, fewer word search problems, better cognition, and faster reaction times after 48-hour fast. This improvement lasts from three to four weeks. Lack of BDNF can cause all kinds of brain-related diseases, including depression, Dementia, poor memory, and poor cognition. Search proteins create enzymes that maintain a healthy cell structure. They have discovered seven certain proteins, but they're unsure of what all they do. This is a very new area of research. If you are younger than 60, cert proteins can be stimulated by a low-carb diet. If you are over 60, it will probably take fasting to stimulate cert production. As you can see, cert proteins repair cell damage, cell DNA, and telomeres. If you have read that visceral fat is a dangerous fat, but few in the medical profession realize how dangerous visceral fat is. It may be the major cause of aging diseases. Healthy cytokines are proteins that are pulsed 
in small quantities to create infl inflammation that is used in various body processes. Examples are creating more muscle due to exercise or more blood, blood cells due to increases in altitude. Excess visceral fat generates large quantities of unhealthy cytokines. Those cytokines create a dangerous amount of in inflammation in our bodies. Here's a list of cytokines visceral fat creates. IL-6 and TNFA appear to be the most dangerous in excess quantities. It is a significant evolutionary defect that visceral fat creates cytokines in quantities that can kill us. Our visceral fat never evolved because it's only within the last 70 years has visceral fat due to overnutrition become a major problem. There are many research papers which show how cytokines cause diseases of aging. Most of these papers come from Japan starting in 1990. Japan seems to be a hotbed of visceral fat research. There is a high correlation between cytokine inflammation and these diseases, type 2 diabetes, kidney disease, heart disease, cancer, and brain disease. Another cause of many diseases is that visceral fat can physically fill up our trunk cavities, creating organ compression. This causes kidney disease, high blood pressure, GERD, sleep apnea, reduction of heart pumping action, and heart AFib. For people over 40, perhaps the greatest benefit of prolonged fasting is visceral fat reduction. Sandra and I, during our annual 10-day fast, noticed that we lose almost no external fat. More about this later. What we do lose is 6 to 8 pounds of visceral fat. Our stomach and waist almost cave in. Blood tests and measurements back this loss. It is a common complaint from fasters at the clinic. They don't lose any external fat except for their face. But all of them seem to end up with smaller waists and hips and thinner faces. Part of my exploration journey was to find out why this happened. It appears that you cannot lose visceral fat without human growth hormone. We start losing our ability to produce HGH at age 40, and it drops to very low levels by age 60. That is why our waists and hips expand as we age. However, a study showed that fasting over 24 hours increase HGH by 1,440% and HGH remains high for 17 fasting days no matter what your age. Natural HGH is produced during sleep in short pulses and thus is not dangerous. The great increase in HGH was the reason we all lost visceral fat during our fast. Another use of HGH during fasting, it is spares proteins in our body. Adiponectin is a protein produced by external body fat. Unfortunately, the cytokines in visceral fat suppress the production of adiponectin. Adiponectin can be used as a biomarker for visceral fat. HGL is a biomarker for 
adiponectin and it is easier to measure than APN directly. Adiponectin is almost the exact opposite of cytokines. Adiponectin reduces inflammation. Adiponectin reverses all the problems caused by visceral fat, plus it improves almost all of the blood values we measure. It is the greatest anti-aging drug in existence and is all naturally produced, but is produced only if you do not have excess visceral fat. A Japanese longevity study showed that a there is a correlation between APN levels and longevity. That means that adiponectin is anti-diabetes, anti-heart disease, anti-cancer, and anti-brain disease. Nicotine suppression suppresses adiponectin and is one of the reasons smoking is so harmful. This side shows that too much visceral fat causes inflammatory cytokine. But as visceral fat decreases, anti-inflammatory adiponectin is produced by our external fat and continues to increase as visceral fat disappears. It appears that when your HDL is 55 or above, you are producing more adiponectin than cytokines. Thus, it is important to lead a lifestyle that minimizes the production of visceral fat or do occasional fasting to get rid of it. Now, I'm going to give you the reasons Dr. McKagan achieve the fasting cure rate that he did on certain diseases. I could talk about all of them, but I do not have time. It will be hard going, but I'm going to read each slide as a summary of my speech. Okay, type 2 diabetes, he had 14 cases, 12 cured or improved, and here's why it happened. Hormone receptor and transmitter reset improved insulin resistance and metabolic performance. Autophagy increased the performance of the pancreas and the liver. Reduction of inflammatory cytokines and increases APN reduces blood sugar overproduction and insulin underproduction. Reduction of visceral fat compression improves the performance of the pancreas and the liver. High blood pressure, 141 cases, 141 cured or improved. Kidney disease, 41 cases, 36 cured or improved. Here's the reason that happened. Autophagy improves kidney performance. Reduction in inflammatory cytokines and increases APN reduces blood pressure. Reduction of visceral fat compression improves the performance of the kidney. Heart disease, 33 cases, 29 cured or improved. Here's the reason for that. Autophagy improves heart performance and reduces arterial plaque. Reduction of blood pressure for improved kidney performance. Cytokine reduction stops production and growth of arterial lesions, which reduces plaque formation. Cytokine inflammation reduction reduces AFib and blood clots. Increases in adiponectin suppresses plaque formation. 
Reduction of visceral fat compression around the heart improves its mechanical pumping action and reduces AFib. Reduction in cytokines reduces ferritin re tension, which reduces the body's inflammatory load. Increases in adiponectin, reduces small, dense LDL particles. Increases in adiponectin, increases HDL3 and HDL2 particles, which prevent LDL oxidation and excess LDL. Cancer, five cases, five cured or improved. Autophagy and CERT protein repairs defective cells and prevents them from becoming cancerous. Prolonged glucose deprivation kills cancer cells. Protein scavenging removes free-floating cancer cells and small tumors. Diabetes cure reduces blood glucose levels which feed cancer cells. Reduces cytokine inflammation that causes cell damage and tumor growth. In summary, the eight major repair processes stimulated by fasting work together to cure many diseases. My wife, Sandra, and I did a medically supervised 10-day fast at the Buchaner Clinic in Marbella, Spain. They have supervised over 250,000 fasts in 60 years. We went there as part of my fasting exploration. I wanted to see if my personal experience backed up the science I had been reading. Now we do annual fasts for its health benefits in September we will do our fourth 10-day fast. It was a medically supervised fast with daily visits to nurses or doctors. We ate 150 calories of vegetable broth per day, mighty thin vegetable broth. <laughs> These calories were offset by 400 calories of exercise per day. Exercise is difficult until you start, and then you have the energy to do what needs to be done. The first two days were difficult because of hunger and brain fog. We drank a lot of hot herbal tea to kill hunger. Hot water does kill hunger. Hunger disappears on day three as you produce ketones in large amounts. Brain fog disappears. Day four to ten seems effortless. You put in your time and enjoy yourself. During those days, we had feeling of well-being, moderate energy levels, improved cognition, and improved vision. When the fast ended, Sandra lost 8.1 pounds, and I lost 8.4 pounds, and one and a half inches around my waist. After the fast, we had four days of eating 800 calories per day of vegetarian meals. This light refeeding is necessary to get the body used to eating again. Okay, I, I took some uh, blood tests before and after fasting. My blood values improved from fasting are off the charts great. We have already discussed why this would occur. Values I'm especially happy about. Reduction of creatine, which means I no longer have kidney disease. Ferritin dropped by 34%. 13 percent increase in HDL, increase in HDL particles, reduction of small dense LDL particle count by 46 percent, down 
to the lowest measurable value. My daughter, who is director of fitness at Entrada Country Club, designed this strength test for my fast. I did five strength tests, 12 days before fast, second day of fast, fourth day of fast, 10th day of fast, 20 days after fast. The machine tests the most I could lift in one repetition after warm-up. There are three machine tests. Look at the leg press machine results in the top row. Note that I'm weaker until I pass the fourth day where ketones really kick in. Then I become permanently stronger. I am stronger on my 10th day of fast than I was before I started the fast. I attribute that to autophagy, cleaning up my muscle cells, which increase my per performance. My experience shows that going without food for 10 days made me a better hunter. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. We have plenty of time for some questions. Jake, that was a great talk. Thank Last 100% of us run out and start fasting. Can you talk about the people who shouldn't do it? Yes. Uh, I don't want to see diabetics who are taking medication fast without a doctor. Because here's what happened. Your blood sugar drops right away, and you're going to be over-medicated. So you need a doctor. As you start losing visceral fat, you need a doctor to lower your medication levels uh, to uh, agree with what your blood sugar is. Same with high blood pressure. Your blood pressure is going to start dropping, and so you need to reduce your medicine then. And then the other people are gluttons. The people who who absolutely have to eat. And it's just too hard psychologically to do that. However, I think fasting trains your hunger and it trains you to know that being hungry is not that bad a thing. And it might get you over your gluttony, but it's tough for those people. What about pregnancy, breastfeeding, HPA oh, axis yeah, dysregulation, right. I, and I would disordered say eating? You got them all. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to warn everybody. That's I think cool. of uh, adults, but no one under 18 should fast unless they have a problem, a, cer a certain problem. Uh, what are some others? Oh, pregnancy? No, nope, you don't want to fast during that. Uh, and I suppose really frail, oh, mal malnourished people. And I'd have to say this, probably most vegetarians are malnourished. And they'll have a difficult time. Thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you for your interesting presentation. I had a question that's related to the previous uh, one. Um, I was wondering about people with a low BMI, let's say 18 or lower. You know what? It's, uh, it's amazing to see. I saw a Russian ballet dancer, although she was uh, in her 50s. She looked skinny as all get out. And she fasted for 10 days, and she only lost, I think, three pounds. And so somehow your body adjusts to the amount that you had to lose. And I imagine what she lost because I couldn't see any difference in how she looked externally. She lost some visceral fat. Uh, I'm curious about your fasting recommendations. I think I heard you say you do this 10-day fast annually and you do once a month a 48-hour fast. Yeah. And, then, uh, and also, what do you think of intermittent fasting where you just only fast 16 hours every day? And eat yeah, I do that. Uh, so what's your, what's your life like? Like, what do you fast? I, th I think, yeah, I... I go from meal time to probably eat lunch at one. And uh, so what is that? That's 14, 15 hours. Then I do a 48-hour fast once a month. And then 
I, we do a 10-day fast once a year. Right. Also, I've been starting to bring in another fast because uh, my whole family puts on visceral fat. So I find that 10-day fast works for about six or seven months, and then I start getting a little stomach again. So I'm going to start throwing in a five-day fast that I do at home. Thank you. If you're ketogenic, do, does this change the timing on the length of time for fasts and when a visceral fast, you know, when we might lo start losing visceral fat and things like that and getting the benefits? If you're on a ke ketogenic diet? Yeah, and you currently do have ketones in your blood. Right. If you're uh, on a ketogenic diet, fasting is really easy for you because you're already a fat burner. You don't have to go through that transition. Uh, I would also say you probably don't have as much visceral fat. So what happens is, is when you run out of fat that the body wants to do, you get super hungry. Then you stop. You go a period with no hunger, no hunger. All of a sudden, you're super hungry. That's when you stop fasting because you have no reason to fast anymore. You mentioned not to take on more than a 48-hour fast without reading up on it. Can you remind us like, what resources would be the best place to start? Uh, uh, here's here's what I did. I went to Kindle and did a uh, research on fasting results, and all these books that I talked about are all out of print, and uh, as a public service, people of uh, I, Gutenberg Project have put them on Kindle, and so just look for those, and they usually cost two or three dollars. Any particular ones that, like, top Well, the list? one, the one uh, done by the doctor who runs the Buchaner Clinic, that is good, because that follows the protocol we follow. Uh, I like Upton Sinclair's book, and uh, Shelton, that's the other big guy. Uh, Shelton, is, his book is really good. Thank you very much. Uh, my or original question has already been answered, so I appreciate that, but I thought of another one. Um, some years ago, I uh, was reading Bernard uh, Jensen's book, I believe it was, and uh, was motivated to go on a seven-day fast, but I, I also included the, the High Anima program and got really pretty fascinating results, and all my joint pain went away, and I stopped eating wheat, and 23 years later, no arthritis. So um, I'm just wondering what you think of the high enema piece of that. Uh, the Buchaner Clinic recommends enemas, and I don't like it. <laughs> 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 One, they're painful, and you, what you are doing is washing out all of your gut bacteria, which I disagree with. A uh, study has shown that you can go a whole month without losing your gut bacteria. So I'm against it. Now, that's personal preference, but I don't think the science supports it. What they think is, is that gut bacteria is uh, toxins that your body has released. And it's not toxins, it's your gut bacteria. So. <laughs> For the question on the books, the Upton Sinclair book and the Shelton book are available. If you search on them, you can get PDFs or, or you know, you can find them on the web just for free. Um, so I've only done a three-day fast. I, 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 but I, although I do 22-hour intermittent fast every day and I am ketogenic. But when I went to a three-day fast, I noticed uh, tongue coating. And, and I understand looking at the fasting literature, that's common. Um, but I could never figure out what other than the fasting people say, oh, yeah, that's your toxins coming out. Do you have any idea what the, any scientific background of what, what the tongue coating is? Oh, one of the mysteries of the world. I have looked everywhere <laughs> for <laughs> what that might be. And uh, the doctors at the fasting clinic says it's toxins released on your stomach. But God knows. <laughs> it, uh, it's really a mystery. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I have very low blood pressure and I can't fast. Have you any recommendation? 
Low blood pressure, yes, your, your blood pressure, you know what, the only thing would be is eat more salt and more, maybe you're a little dehydrated. But that might be a danger for you. That'd be something you have to really watch, yeah. I have another one, short one. Do you know about the research from Austria about uh, coffee can uh, intensify, stimulate um, autophagy? What was that? Yeah. I don't think so, and here's why. There's just too much nutrition in coffee. And if you're receiving nutrition, autophagy will stop, especially if you're eating proteins or antioxidants. And, anti and coffee is full of antioxidants. So I would okay. say no. Thank you. All right, thank you.